Hello, I'm Charles Coves, Australasia's passion provocateur. Welcome to this week's episode of the Charles Coves Show, episode 160. Whether you're watching on YouTube or Rumble or listening via podcast. In this week's episode, I urge you to wake others up if you are awake because we have to save ourselves and our future. The governments and politicians will not save us. We cannot rely on them. They have already sold out to the global agenda. The global agenda includes the goals of the United Nations, the World Economic Forum, the World Health Organization, also called the World Holocaust Organization, and the New World Order, amongst many others. The goal of the global agenda is this. You will own nothing and you will be happy. I am awake and I reject this global agenda. I say this global agenda is a fraud and it's being perpetrated on humanity and it is deeply evil. If you are awake to this evil, then the question is whether you are willing to awaken others to this evil. There are benefits and drawbacks in doing so, and I list them for your consideration to help you decide your own next steps in designing the future of humanity. Our format for the show is that I discuss today's big idea. I give you six resources that will help you take action on the big idea if it appeals to you. I review some key happenings during the week and then the foundational principles for this show and background about me now happen at the end of the show where regular viewers and listeners don't need to go because they already know that stuff. But for newer viewers and listeners, I hope you go there to gain some insight into what this show is about and who I am. So let's go with today's big idea. It's inspired by Dr. Ahmed Malik, an orthopedic surgeon in Scotland. He grew up uh, in Scotland, Pakistani origin, uh, raised as a Muslim, but he's given Islam away. And he is a very humorous speaker. You can find out more about him at Doc Malik. That's D-O-C-M-A-L-I-K dot com. And he was the guest of Medical Doctors for COVID Ethics International meeting earlier this week. I moderate two of such meetings each week. One key idea he shared is that he says he learned nothing about health at medical school. How about that? They learn doctors are taught lots of stuff about drugs and pharmaceuticals, but not much about health. Well, he says he learned nothing about health. He said in his presentation, and I agree because you've heard me say it if, you're a, if you've seen me before on this show, with what's happening in the world today, if we are awake, we need to awaken others and speak the truth. We must save ourselves. The politicians will not do it. Governments will not do it. It is up to us to create the world that we want and not the world that's being imposed upon us via a global agenda. This global agenda has been developed by global elitists, and I've spoken about them over the last th three years on many occasions. And I hope you're starting to see the evidence of these global elitists. When I first talked about the Great Reset, most people hadn't heard of it. Many more people have heard about the Great Reset. If you are asleep or in a trance and you haven't yet awoken, or those around you particularly, because if you're watching or listening to this show, you're highly likely to be awake, otherwise you would have rejected me years ago. The asleep, the asleep won't realise the game plan of the United Nations, of the World Economic Forum, of the Central Bank Digital Currency Game Plan, of the social credit system where you will be punished and unable to access your digital currency if you're a bad person. 
15 minute ghettos called 15 minute cities or smart cities or all part of agenda 2030 to stop you traveling a fraudulent climate crisis a one world government where australia and the country you live in give away their sovereignty for the benefit of all a new world order as promoted by klaus schwab and the world economic forum the loss of your home because you are promised that by 2030 you will own nothing and you will be happy i assure you i won't be the loss of your food security farmers being attacked left right and center all in the name of climate crisis and the esg movement the environmental social governance movement i talked about this at length in my previous show two weeks ago on the fraudulent nature of the climate crisis we have a soil emergency we have a waste emergency we have a plastic emergency we have a pollution emergency we don't have a climate emergency but the environmental social and governance elements are also evil because if you don't follow that social agenda of the global elitists you then get cancelled people who speak the truth like me are cancelled or attempted to be cancelled it is salutary to note that very few senior business figures in australia and around the world are willing to speak up against this global agenda what does that tell you the conclusion is that only we can save ourselves the politicians will not they have been bought senior politicians become senior politicians because they have bought into the agenda and i accuse them of having sold out politicians who speak up against the global agenda do not become ministers in governments just observe that politicians who speak against the global agenda are ignored by their colleagues in the same party because it's not part of the agenda a case in point is Senator Alex Antich in Australia, Senator Gerard Rennick in Australia, Andrew Bridgen, member of, member of the UK Parliament, Senator Ron Johnson in the USA. They're all cancelled, laughed at, ostracised. Now, if you are awake to these threats to your future and the future of humanity, then the question is whether you're going to try to awaken others. And I want to go through the five benefits and drawbacks of doing so. You can't take a course of action that doesn't have benefits and drawbacks. And, and you know, you look at your friends, you look at your family and you say, should I try to wake them up? Are they, are they possible to wake up? Well, you don't know unless you try. But there are dangers in doing so. There are drawbacks in doing so and benefits. So what are those, firstly, benefits? So here's the five benefits. I've got to be quick, otherwise the show will be too long. Number one, you add an additional fighter to the cause of saving ourselves and saving our future. Saving our lives as we want them to be, not as someone else is wanting to design them. Number two, you create a deeper relationship with the person that you have helped to awaken because they're grateful for what you have done for them. Number four, the person that you have helped to wake up will help to awaken others in all sorts of unknowable ways. And the fifth benefit is that those whom you awake will help to create new circles of friends for you. And maybe a sixth benefit is they introduce you to a new style of coffee. Mm -hmm. Although I love my styles of coffee. So there are drawbacks in awakening people. There's always drawbacks to whatever you do. There's benefits, there's drawbacks. Here's the drawbacks of waking them up. The first one, people don't want to wake up. They will reject you for trying to wake them up. The second drawback, when life gets tough in the short term, as it does if you're awake, then they will blame you for those difficulties. Number three, because you tried to wake them up, 
they will say bad things about you. You will suffer reputation damage. Number four, your job and career prospects may be harmed because of this reputational damage. Number five, your life will be less comfortable than it is now. Well, I embrace these drawbacks. I embrace the drawbacks of attempting to wake people up via this show, via everything that I do, via the moderation of meetings that I do. I continue to attempt to wake people up. Are you willing to wake people up? Are you worried about the future of humanity as I am? Are you worried about the global agenda? Are you willing to speak your truth? So, let me share six resources for you. The song, a very famous song, Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. You see, that's what waking up does. People going along a particular course are asleep to the threats. They go, oh, that's not going to matter much. No, you will own nothing and you'll be happy. I reject that. And pe if people can't see that, of course, they won't be worried about it. But when you will waken them up, they'll be like the wretch that was lost but is now found, was blind but now sees. Be inspired by this beautiful hymn that, in fact, was written by a former slave trader, John Newman. My book I recommend to you is by Ben Elton, an amazing uh, humour writer, author, brilliant mind. It's called Identity Crisis. I love the red. See how the red goes beautifully for those of you watching on YouTube? Identity Crisis is a fiction, but it's, it's a wonderful exploration of the woke world that's being imposed upon us, of not saying the wrong thing, of if you say the wrong thing, you get cancelled. And on the back it says, a series of apparently random murders draws amiable old-school detective into a world of sex, politics and reality TV and a bewildering kaleidoscope of opposing identity groups. It goes on. Each day another public figure confesses to having misspoken and prostates themselves before the judgment of Twitter, begging for forgiveness, assuring the public, that is not who I am. You say, if you speak your truth and Twitter doesn't approve, you're in trouble. Well, I say embrace that trouble because failing to speak the truth is a disaster for all of us. Thus, my quote is from the Bible, John chapter 8, verse 32. The truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. Look for the John 832 symbol, or just the 832 symbol, you will know that people are sending you a message that they're interested in the truth. My health tip. It arose from a number of conversations, and I, I give it in the context of hospitals and doctors. And the message is this. If you want to protect your health, Question everything. Question everything a hospital wants to do with you, a doctor wants to do with you. Question everything that a doctor wants you to put into your body or a hospital wants to inject into you. You must be willing to question. And most people don't question because they go, oh, the doctor knows best. No, take a friend with you or be the friend that goes to help question what's happening to you. Slavishly accepting what hospitals and doctors want to put into you is not a good health strategy. At a spiritual level, my spiritual tip is to meditate on this question. If you love somebody, would you try to wake them up? If you love them, are you willing to speak the truth to them about what's happening?
because each one of us has different levels of knowledge about what's happening. Does love mean that you have to speak up? And for a spot of humour about waking up, early one morning a mother went in to awaken her son. Wake up, son, it's time to go to school. But why, mum? I don't want to go. Give me two reasons why you don't want to go, says mum. Well, the kids hate me for one, and the teachers hate me also. Oh, that's no reason not to go to school. Come on, get ready. Give me two reasons why I should go to school, says the son. Well, in the first place, you're 52 years old. In the second place, you're the school principal. <laughs> uh, we don't want to wake up, do we? So, think about today's big idea and how taking the steps I suggest could make a beneficial difference to your life. A life that I believe is meant to be all that you're capable of making it. My aim for this show is to provoke you, to inspire you, to motivate you, to educate you, to examine your life now and to keep doing so for the rest of your life. I invite you to subscribe to this show via YouTube or Rumble or via the podcast. If you enjoy it, share it with your family, friends and work colleagues. Visit our websites, covest.com and charlescovest.com. And you can also find details of my two books, Passionate People Produce and Passionate Performance, at those websites and learn about the self-awareness and passion quest that could change your life in amazing ways. Now, let me re review some matters during the week before we get to the end. My guest on the TNT radio program Yesterday was John Lukarts from Virginia, USA, an amazing health researcher, not a doctor, scientist, thinker, that my, my show on Mind Medicine is every 4 p.m. Melbourne time on Saturdays, but the recordings are all available at tntradio.live. Our Outrageous Premier in Victoria, Daniel Andrews, did it again by cancelling the Commonwealth Games peremptorily, outrageously, contrary to the contracts that have been signed by this state. He is a disgrace. He is a fraud. He is a liar. He's the worst Premier this state has ever seen. And he is so amazingly clever. He has put into all of the major organisations in this state all of his acolytes, and supporters, so very few people speak against him. Everybody, we must, for those who understand, speak up against this fraudulent government led by this fraudulent man. Not only is he a fraud, but he has gagged the public servants or anybody involved, I don't know how he can do that, from speaking the truth about the lies that he's promulgated about the cost of this Commonwealth Games and it's being sold as a cost-saving measure. In fact, he announced it as an election-winning measure. I was appalled by an article in The Australian on the 20th of July talking about the levels of excess death. And the reason why I want to bring it to your attention is the appalling quality of reporting in the mainstream media. I buy the newspapers and I, I cut out articles as the physical evidence and I will keep this physical evidence about the fraud that's being perpetrated on us. But this is another fraudulent article about excess deaths in Australia. It's, it's, it's gobsmackingly fraudulent. Another noteworthy matter occurring during the week is that the movie Sound of Freedom that shines a light on the global sex trade, global child sex trade, has sold over $100 million in tickets. That was a few days ago. It is booming, and the mainstream media is trying to discount it and ignore it. This is children being traded for sex, for body parts. The Pope is silent. I'm appalled. 
you should be appalled that this true story is being ignored. The censorship and the misleading nature of mainstream media is, is staggering. And if you can't see that, then you are deeply asleep. But again, I say, if you're watching or listening to the show, then you are not asleep, but others clearly are. But in the meantime, as I urge you to, as you've heard me urge you many times before, you can choose to be happy in the midst of this war that we are fighting. You can be happy. I urge you to be happy because happiness is a choice. I am happy. I'm happy being married to Julie. Julie says she's happy with me. I hope she is. But you can be happy in the midst of these challenges, in the midst of facing the drawbacks of waking others up. So if you're new to the show, stick around because we cover the foundational principles for the show and a bit of background about me. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Until our next show, may your week be full of passion, challenge, embracing challenge, humour, comedy, laughter and steps that you take to increase your self-awareness so that you are able to embrace this gift of life that we have each been given. Have a great week. See you next week. Bye. And now, for viewers and listeners who want to know more about my background and what else I do with my life, as well as the foundational principles of the show. Here we are. Since 1993, when I left my legal career, a career that I love to become Australasia's passion provocateur, I have inspired and provoked and educated and motivated people all over the world to discover and pursue their passion. I have helped people via the books that I've written, via speeches at conferences, via in-depth team building programs, workshops over one, two or three days or over three months, six months. And I've coached people of all ages, one-on-one -on -one from small, medium and large enterprises, government enterprises, helping them to identify the often tiny changes that can make a massive difference. One of my core principles is that freedom is what makes us truly human. That's why one of the th greatest threats that government imposes on you to force you to observe its laws is the threat of imprisonment, the loss of your freedom. Just think about that. Government says, if you don't behave yourself, we're going to put you in jail. No, no, I don't want to go to jail. I don't want to lose my freedom. That's a reminder to you of why freedom is so important. Without freedom, you and I are not much different to animals. If you were locked up in a cage for the rest of your life, how, how different would you be to an animal? This commitment to fighting for freedoms for all people is carried out by me th made primarily through five channels. Number one, preserving the freedom to pursue your passion. Number two, inspiring you to be able to be free through excellent health. Number three, helping preserve freedom throughout the world through the expansion of industrial hemp, a magnificent agricultural crop, an almost miraculous crop that enables every community to thrive independently of government. In this way, the power of government to take away freedom is minimized. Number four, fighting for freedom through legal strategies. So I do work as a legal strategy consultant, as an interface between clients and their lawyers. And number five, as chairman of the Australian Institute of Comedy and as a board member of the Australian Cartoon Museum, fighting for the freedom of thought and speech through uncensored comedy and humour through avoiding political correctness in the comedic space. 
When you block freedom of speech, freedom of thought, that's the beginning of the end of your freedoms. The foundational principles for the Charles Covest Show are founded on the formula SA plus P equals S. Your self-awareness added to your passion will guarantee that you are successful. And the best definition of success I have found in life is that success is the progressive realization of your worthy ideals. The progressive realization of your worthy ideals. This show is also guided by Socrates' famous principle and quote, the unexamined life is not worth living. You can see I'm wearing my red jacket. I wear my red jacket for all my shows. Red is the color of passion. So that when you see me on the YouTube version, it reminds you that when you see red in your life, you ask yourself the question, am I pursuing my passion? What am I passionate about? Am I still passionate about that? What might I newly be passionate about? Each week I explore one big idea that can change your life. And it's just one big idea because there's a chance you will remember it. If I give you too many ideas, then we, we get confused and we don't do anything. Clarity leads to power. Confusion kills passion. Each week I share simple and practical resources that you've heard me describe in the earlier part of the show. A spiritual tip, a health tip, lyrics of a song, a book, a quote, and of course humour. This show is not politically correct. I have no intention of being politically correct. And I love certain addictions, including my addiction to great coffee. Mmm. My addiction to exercise, my addiction to reading, and my addiction to certain other unmentionable in public type behaviours. Who would know what they are? This show definitely subscribes to the view that we have a spiritual life. So if you don't like discussion of spirituality, this show is not for you. I promise you that I don't include anything in this show that I don't consider to be true and that I have not found to be useful in the work that I've done over the past 28 years, but also over the past 50 years in business, as a lawyer, as a consultant advisor. I only want to share stuff with you that is of value to you. Finally, if you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to contact me at charles at Again, thanks for watching and listening to my show. Bye.